Without further ado, Mushin, what can I get for a hand? I want. Oh, she's moving. Get my jacket back again. So, it's too much in the shot to fight you. Where the point now, Tom? You want to move a bubble? Where the point? Where am I get for it? I'm just a. We can support Gun Jiram Hook. Tucker. Gun Togra show. I guess she needs. Kashi Tucker. Shot in the belly. It's cold in the belly. A goal of energy. I have been scoring over both goals. I guess she needs. No, no, no. How do you want? I have been scoring both big, big. He means a task or a goal in myself. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. 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 Tarmo Manchin, agus John Tom, John Tom Level, kisil ng up. Kira makmagasos, kasi sa wala pa kami may agus stack ni Shke. Agus pina hit wala niyo, taka mo wai ni kumay, upon mag ni Shke. Agus ni ni lo abra ni yam, ni ni sa kina ng gibok mo sa kanyo. Agus si profa, agus ira malahe ni for much. The first time. I myself went to the islands, was when I was very small, and uh, it was my father and William, Willie, William, they call him Cawley, that was married to my aunt, and John Tom Lavell, everybody he knows, Mary John Tom, and Mary John Tom's father were the three oarsmen, and we went out to Portmore in Tinnishki, and I was only a little lad, they put me out in the bow by the colour, and I remember the dash coming over, and I was only very young. And that was my first time ever to lay my foot on in the ski north. We landed on in the ski north. And of course, like growing up in Sarview at that time, in the early 50s and 60s, most of the old people that anything over 40 were all born on the island. They were all great girls. It was their first language. Some of them had a smattering of English. Some of them had good English and some had no English at all. <laughs> and uh, they had an outward of French from dealing with the Frenchmen, you know. And they were very gregarious and very light-hearted people. But they took their work very seriously, they, 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 you know. And they didn't take life that seriously, really. Because if you did, you wouldn't be going out and going into the dangers they were, you know, every day of their life. They continued on fishing, like, probably, well, even the old people. Some of them into their 60s and 70s. There was a man there that you heard recorded, John Riley. John Vidin Teddy, they used to call him, who you all probably few here remember as well. He lived down at the bottom of Surview there, and uh, that man was fishing up until his seventies, anyway. Now maybe not full time, but he would still, if he got anyone daft enough to put down the colour with him, he wanted to go out. You see, you know. And I remember as a young fella too, when going to school, and Cyril Monaghan and Glash. Uh, were the only two. They were all gone fishing and all gone to England. That was when I was only young fella. And Teddy didn't get us to put down the colour. And once Teddy got the colour down, that's all he wanted. He was the captain from there on. He'd done all the <laughs> schooling. So, however, the old fella got wind of it anyway, and he told me, Don't let me hear again that you've gone out with that old man. He said, out. He was the first cousin of his. He said, Out with him. If he dropped dead on you, he said, What would you do over at them? <laughs> I think there was more chance of ourselves dropping dead than Teddy. <laughs> But th that's, you know, and um, that was their life, that was their, that's what was in their thoughts every night and day. And there was a lot of, uh, they lived into the 70s, I said, and into the 1970s and 1980s, you know. But the last of the Inneski, I suppose, Johnny Wayne down here, I think it's the last now, that was actually born on the island, you know. Uh, unless there's some far field, but I don't think so. I think all in America and elsewhere are all gone to, you know. Um, as I said, I used to hear a lot in the book. I, I mentioned like that my mother used to say a lot about the old people. When I used to hear them stories, I thought they were talking about back in the time of Finn McCool and all that, like, you know, that it was ancient, ancient history, but it was not. The last settlement was from 1760 until the 1830s, like. 
uh, when uh, Dan, Dan, that they named the point after the cup, Dan, Dan McGinty went in, and the rest of them. Um, there was a lot of, there was, back to Christian times, and maybe before there was people on Inishki you know, and uh, I don't know how many settlements. And I came across a very interesting thing lately there. There was a, a period before the Great Famine, in 17, about 100 years before the Great Famine, in the 1740s, there was a year came with great, this, it froze at Christmas and it stayed frozen for a year nearly, or nearly two years. And they called it Green and Oil, if any year ever read it. And uh, it was a very, very, a lot of people died. And there's a, a book out on Castlebar Jail. And I came across this article and I went into further research it. There was 20 of the Inishki Islanders jailed in Castle Bar during this period for piracy, <laughs> which continued on until the 1800s and indeed further. But, I mean, the last settlement on Inishki was from around 1760 until the 1830s. But this is going back into the 1700s. So if there was 10 or 20 of them jailed then, there must have been a fair community there that time. But it must have had disappeared, you see, by the time the 1800s came. So, you know, but you, the records, as you know, Phil, you know, you can't go, we have nothing like that time, like, you know, that would tell us who lived there, unless jail records maybe or something like that. Now, I don't know, I must get on to this fellow that wrote it, see their names to the people that was actually jailed, you know. Yeah. But um, the islands then, of course, they were always beautiful, like, you know, I mean, even as kids, when we went in there, there was, some, there was something very magical about them. They were very tranquil and quiet and a little bit like, you know, maybe surgery itself. But it was said that when they, uh, people were leaving the island that they were offered land and meat, but they would not go. They were laughing. They were, you know, that was the time of De Valera's, uh, migration from Connemara and parts of Mayo up to the Midlands. And a lot of people, a lot of families and different families went from all over Ares. But uh, it was said that the Inniskees that time, that Father Dodd had arranged for them to get land there, but they would not leave the sea, you know. They didn't want to go too far. There was talk too that they, they were going to throng, wasn't it, Barry? Yeah. And uh, I don't know. <laughs> but they stayed where they were nearest to the island. And you need a lot of stories. I heard a man say one time that they built the houses in Inniski facing in, which is not true, you know. Or fa facing opposite, the other way that they didn't want to be reminded of the island. Like. Yeah. But that's not, that's not true. They, there's houses facing south and west in, in Tonalfi, Anglo. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah. And, uh, but the people that left count, mostly said... There wasn't there. Huh? There is now, but there wasn't there. Well, there yeah. was. They were, they were facing Ackle. Yeah, but they were facing the ski. They are. Michael Cotchley or something, aren't they? Yeah, that's why they the new house. But the, uh, oh, the old oh, yes, 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 yes. You're right, yeah. No, not the face of the island. But well, first, that, that was the prevailing wind. wind, was west, so you'd hardly I go. I think it's the wind and the gold. Yeah, it had, yeah. So the wind was coming from there. You wouldn't put, put the front door facing the wind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No. Anyway, um, what was I going to say? But as I said, thinking of the old people, like, you know, the, I mean, you'll hear names like, uh, still hear them today but you know that many nowadays know who you're talking about if you start talking about yeah. Bidding Teddy and yeah. Philip Moore and uh, Pat Yon Wan, John Avili, you know. Bidding Lad, will you will you really mean? Bidding Lad. John Fatin used to say to my mother, now Catherine would you believe it that the three women, Bidding Lad and George, and Mary Tom were three sisters, yeah. which they were. <laughs> <laughs> there were three Cain sisters. One of them, your grandmother, married Michael Padden. And Michael was given the name Lal. Pat Wharton, as a child, couldn't say Michael. He said Lal. So he was known as Lal. And they called his son Michael Lal. And then when she married Lal, she was called Biddy Lal. Mary Tom was my grandmother. And she married Tom McGinty, so they named her after Tom, Michael Tom. She was the son of Anthony, actually, or the daughter of Anthony. And, uh, and George 
Well, Pat Walton was known as George for some reason. Pat Walton. How did that come up? I don't know. Maybe. King George of England. <laughs> Maybe, yeah, no. I doubt if that was who he was there. That depends whether he was on the head or the Wallahir. He was a king of England. Wallahir, Wallahir, no, George. That's right. Quan George, they used to call them too for some reason, yeah. He was regarded as one of George Mingum. Eh? George Mingum. Oh, well, I guess. <laughs> Maybe he had notions of that, I don't know. But they called, when she married him, then they called her Anne George. Anne George. Anne George. Anne George. So, um, was handy for the pension officer, Kimball. Hmm? Was handy for the pension officer, Kimball. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well. Thomas, sorry you didn't find that out before now. What? For George. Well, you didn't find out. Oh, about yeah. Well, I didn't. Well, that's why he didn't write. Did no, I don't think my mother knew one. I spent long enough with them. I used to stay with Aunt George as a young fella. She was my grand aunt. There is none of the them canes at all left now. And the canes that are in Sergio, they came from Falmore. The Peets, you see. And uh, they weren't in the ski, but they married Bridgie Roger, was calling. So there's no none of them canes. The three came brothers and three sisters. Three of them went to Hackley. Yeah. And they married in Dugart, Dunever, and there was the other fellow. And uh, Pat. my mother's brothers were married to that's, Dugart Pat. That's right, that was a different yeah, side. Then uncle. on Theresa's side here. Yeah, my uncle Pat. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well my mother's uncle. Yeah. yeah. And all them canes that's in Hackley now, they're of that. And they were known as Clan Henry Beck. Yeah. And uh, he was, uh, uh, their father was Anthony Kane, mm -hmm. and their father again was Harry Kane, and he was known as Henry Bell. And he was the son of Sean Marcus that came, yeah. the second family to settle on in the ski. Yeah. They came from Arkham, and they went in in 1765. Yeah. yeah. And as I said, there isn't one of them, their blood is there, but there's none of the name now of them, Cahons. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, you had the O'Donnells. Oh, yeah. The Ruas. Mitchell Mullan. Yes, Mitchell Mullan. Mm -hmm. Down, I don't know, was it fishing or what? He took to, but he stayed on the island and he married one of the kings, one of them kings. Mm -hmm. The portrait, wasn't it? Yeah. The tall was behind you there on the table. Sorry, Pat. The tall was behind you there on the table. Oh, that one there. Yeah. Here you go. Is that Johnny Harrow or? Johnny, 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 Johnny. Johnny Harrow was his son. John, Sean Harrow himself came from yeah. Galway, came That's from Little Mullan. There you go. No. Boat building, I suppose, making boats. John Paddy, that gave it to my grand uncle. Oh, lovely. Oh, it's for a timber. It's like a tour, but uh, you, you could uh, bend timber with it. Uh, curve, yeah. Two nails. How was that? Oh, it's an old, old, old timber, but all right. She'd be sharp. They'd go at it like that. Just. I seen a man using it. You know the curve with the curve on the front? Yeah, I've seen a man doing that with it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's split fell with that. Yes, sir. What about the pub light? Sorry? What about the pub light? Well, I used to hear Rupert Wharton on about. Uh, uh, there was a fellow called Shawnee. Uh, he was. Uh, he was Kane. No, he was McGinty. Uh, one of PJ's gang. <laughs> well, actually, they are way back, but they're not the same in the McGinty's. Shawnee, he said, was uh, had no use of his legs. He was a cripple. He was known as the Claudine of right? And the reason they called him the Claudine of they had a little board and they put four little wheels on it. And he used to wheel himself around with his hands like that on the board, you know. And he, he was named after the Claudine. The Claudine is the board, of course. You know? <laughs> And he had the sheep in on the South Island, and uh, it wasn't licensed. Now on the North Island, the Cranes, John Crane, as people, um, Richard Crane, married um, one of the Wienicons, one of the Sallies, and they were a Mulhro, and they went into uh, Inniski and opened a pub right there where the barracks was. They put police in the ski, they were revenue police rather than the ordinary things, it was to stop putching me. You know? And they succeeded. <laughs> but um, the pub was right beside it there. 
and uh, the cranes had the pub until they left. And um, John Joe Crane, that was in Sir's view, would have been the last. And then there was four yards, you know, the cavalry piece, all that. There was plenty of putching made, and his ski was famous for his putching. Actually, Boycott's wife would drink nothing else, only in his ski. And uh, there was a few uh, people that came, and they heard him talking about the ski, the ski ski, and it was the in ski putching. And few of our English travellers thought it was a mineral water, like say, and they, and they see them all drinking it, and they thought it was for their health. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't know. <laughs> Are they English for you? <laughs> anyway, uh, if only they knew. <laughs> yeah, but uh, oh yes, drink. There was, uh, as I said, in ski. There was a lot of, uh, and as I wrote in the book, my own family, the McGintys on my mother's side, had some very anti-Keynes tragic. Um, there was one man. Uh, my grandfather was Tom McGinty and his father was Sean Anthony, the same as PJ's. And Sean Anthony had two brothers. Sean Anthony had two sons, Michael and, sorry, Anthony had two sons, Sean and Michael. Now we only hear of Sean because he had a family and it passed on down through the generations. The McGinty's were still here. The only McGinty's on the Mullet Peninsula were the Inniski McGinty's yeah. because they came from Tullahondoff in Gisala and they went in when uh, Anthony went. Anyway, one of them was delivering Pachin over at Duhuma uh, in his little glow choke, they used to call it. It was a small boat mm. and he had a few firkins of whiskey, <laughs> you know. Now Devlon used to also make Pachin but they used to colour it with tea or heather and they called it Parliament because if you pay tax on it that time that was known as Parliament, yeah? Yeah. Parliament whiskey. He, he sold it as it was, watery colour, you know. But he drowned anyway. Now he was married with one child, Catherine McGinty. And when he was drowned, his wife took the child and she went to America. Now I don't know did she meet this other cane man and I don't think he may not even be a Mayo man or an Irishman or whether she met him on the travels, but she married him in America and they raised their child, Catherine. And Catherine got married, and that's her granddaughter, that was beyond your party, probably as well as myself, Doreen Hearn. You know, she contacted years ago. And that's who her yeah, people were. She, she came here once, I think, but um, yes. they, it was only a short stay. They had to go again. You were in the Heritage Centre at the time. Now, there was another one of the Keynes then, um, John Kane. He had a big family. In 1895, they were going to act himself and the daughter, and the daughter was 15 years of age, and they reckon she was as good a roar as any man. And in the colour they were, and they were delivering Pachin over to Ackle, and they were drowned off Blacksad, between Blacksad and Dugart there, yeah. and the bodies were found over in Ballycroy. It was very tragic. He left a family and seven, I think. And funny enough, when I was researching the book, I came across a site one day, a place called Inishki, a B&B, on the Isle of... Which island was it? In Scotland. Uh, it's one of the Scottish islands anyway. I cannot think now. I think it's the Isle of Mull, yeah. On the Isle of Mull. There was a place called Inishki, B&B. I, I often wonder why, why, it's funny, it's not a name that you often see and if you google it you won't, you'll only get the one in the ski, the island. Even to you as English? Exactly, he was spelled as English too, funny enough. Yeah. It's not on Google, that's what you've said Well, you've got taste, if you put in the Inish, I-N-I-S-H ski, it's in Scotland. You see, it's a lovely house, and all done, it's a and b And I'll tell you the story, that then when I published the book, I got this email from the Isle of Mull. And I said, well, that would be too much of a coincidence. Yeah. So I contacted her one back and I said, yeah, I'd send her. She wanted two books, one for herself and her friend. And it turned out that the lady that owned it was Kane. And her great grandfather left in a ski and ended up on the Isle of Mull. And they were there since. So that's and she was one of them Kanes whose sister and father was 
drowned just outside uh, Black Sack. Okay. So it's a small world. Don't I know they had a collection for them, for the family, yeah. shortly after, and you'll see it in the papers even in the early 1900s. Right. And how one of them ended up there. That's amazing. Amazing, isn't it? So the Inuski, the Great Diaspora, it's it's definitely the Inuskis are all over, like yeah. all our own people here on the Mullet Peninsula and Farafield and other parts of the world, you know. You could get them anywhere. I think it has more connections worldwide than any other island of its side. Well it is because probably so many of them left to you know the Western countries. Yeah. But there is a form that comes from America Even one step similar. Don't come up on, um, on their family trees. They're still looking. They maintain their connections on the island. There you go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. See, a lot of families whose names we've forgotten now too are uh, long gone. Same as there was in Falmore and in Thumhalti and Tarman. I mean, there was families in Tarman, like I mean that you, yeah. you didn't even forget about it. And Phil's collection there. This is where you'll find now some of the stuff, like you know, yeah. and. Uh, they were revision books, it was great. I, I never knew about them until you mentioned it. Right? Oh, God, no. Yeah, it, it's a great, it's right. It continues on, you see. You know, I only ever checked out the 50, you know, the 1850 ones. <coughs> I didn't realize that they kept it up. I think yeah. you personally should copy the likes of that, whatever you have, yeah. whatever you get. Oh, yes. yes in, in that format, in the 83 yeah. format, because they are. Yeah, very good. What do you think of Tarman? Oh, yeah. Jesus, I got well, you know, you know it. I did. I went through it. See, Mary. Yeah, sure. I mean, there was, I see names there and things. You know the area. I don't even know. I know, yeah. I know it's funny to that. Yeah. Well, Tarman was, one of the biggest, was the biggest village in the Mullet. And maybe in really? Paso Veras, yeah. There were six. How much? 102. At one time, yes. Really? There was, yeah. At one stage there was over a hundred thousand. I mean, living up there now. I'm in the village. Yeah. On the top of the head. But she's given one the house. Where the old village was? The old village was. She's in the stair now. Very oh, good. Uh, yeah, happily spot. Uh, <laughs> that's where all the poor people were, and the, the landlords had the good land. Oh, of course. Yeah. So it was the same everywhere. Yeah. 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 You were only allowed to work their land for them. You weren't allowed to own their land. Yeah. Did they out or immigrate? Hmm? Did they die out or immigrate? Oh, the famine does away with that. But um, then the lot died out, a lot immigrated families. You know. yeah. The biggest family that died around here was the Cranes. Crying, yeah. Eight families of Cranes between Swagger and Ellis Land at one stage. Eight families of Cranes. Really? Not one to them. All around down here? Between Swagger Stream and Ellis Land. By God. There was eight families of Cranes. Yeah. There you go. The there isn't one to That's right, Pat, Pat Crane. Married, married Biddy Gannon, yeah. Well, we have gammons in our ancestry, but I didn't, they, they hadn't much land at any <laughs> The one that married my. Uh, um, she became a Catholic and she was disowned. She married Anthony Kane. Uh, Richard Harry Kay, that Harry Bell that we were talking Harry, about, yeah. Harry Bell. He married Mary Gamut. And <laughs> there were stories that I heard, you cannot find any, the, the, their birth records mm-hmm. too far back, but that I she was an illegitimate, that they used to say that. that yeah. Yes. Yeah. But they were, the, they were she, she had already been dis- disowned because of the fact that she married a Catholic. Whatever. But, and Biddy Yam, they were over in Ellie there. Yeah. Mm. You know where Nash? No, yeah, sorry. Yeah. 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 yes. No. Angela's yeah. house. Angela, oh yes. Where, where, exactly. Yeah, where we are in the Chaps Inn. Which house are you in? Yeah. Are you really? I was in that house when I was a small boy. Peter Riley had to die. That's right, yes. Well, he, he, Biddy was married to Riley. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Biddy Yam and my grandmother were first cousins. Yeah. Pat Gamble and Inneski, uh, Pat Gamble and Ellie and Harry Gamble and Inneski were brothers. And my grandmother, Mary Kane, was born in Newtown because the Gammons were there at the time. Yeah. Mary Mary Pat, was married Pat Crane. Yeah, and he married, like, one of married Pat Crane, yeah. But I remember Billy, Billy Gammon. I was over as a boy with my mother on a Sunday. We walked all the way from Oxley Church down to Ellie. And uh, she was alive that time. That would be in the late 50s. Late 1850s. Yeah. 1950s. Yeah. 1950s. 1950s. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
<laughs> I'm well, well. I'm 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 so steep back in the 1800s, like, you know, all my research was in the 1800s. Mm. Yeah, there's none of them gambles left now. Dunbar's was another name. That was an Inniski, Tarman, and Carthur. Mm. Uh, Breaching Dunbar, uh, Breaching Dunbar, she was the last of them. She was, she was waked for eight weeks and initiated. Really? Eight weeks? Eight weeks. That's what I have. There must be some portal right there. I have a day. I have a day. I have a day. Why? Why? Why, why, why has she so... Uh, what was the famous Irish song? <laughs> what was the famous Irish song? The book that rose up in the bed. When he gets away, when he gets away. Eight weeks. Done bars, yeah. Uh, I don't know, some fella, unless you know Mary, some man from Tarman was digging back in um, where the quarries are one year and he found an anvil. Yeah. The John Bears operation, the powder house. That's right. There, there was, there was, because there was a smithy there. there was a, you don't know who the man was. It didn't name him, but it said, this was in the 1940s, I think. It's probably, it went, it's supposed to have gone to the museum in Dublin. But the, he found the anvil when he was digging out there somewhere. You know, and yeah, they sent it after the chuck food. Chuck yeah. yeah. It was one of the Dunbar's that was in that, wasn't it? Yeah. And there was a fellow in Carthur here, he was a, a black there was one in the Black and there was one across the road from where James Rowan's house was There was one of them that there were two of them married in Inniski, and the Welshes, Mary John Tom, Pat Wharton, all them, your mother's people, they were. Married to one of the Dunbars, and uh, Willie William Teddy's father, Willie Teddy, married another one of them. Nan and Bleach Dunbar, they were known as. Yeah. So they were the last of them on in the ski. It, um, I don't know which of them, which, what did you say was the name of the one that was waiting for? Bleach Dunbar. Bleach Dunbar. Bleach Dunbar. Bleach she got a great send off. Right? <laughs> there wasn't much fishing done, did <laughs> So, are you in the old house? Yeah. Did you do what the old house? I haven't been down there. Oh, that's right, yeah, I know all of you, but I didn't know you. Where? And uh, I don't know, one of those guys, but somebody came to see that. Yeah, yeah, but what did you get? Uh, 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 there was a name I found in the 1901 in Gamma's in the castle working with. She was Nappy. Nappy Rua. No, I never knew that Nappy was a sharp name for. That's some very rare names, yes. What happened? I give you uh, a few bars of a translation I made of Oran and Ishke for those that don't speak the lingo as English as the known as Baha and Ishke. It translates it's not I'm often confused with the drowning of Inishke. Boy amid the voyage or the trail or the thing to Inishke. And it was written by Theresa's uncle Declare.
You know that. All I'm declared it was always going on. Always back here, you know. And uh, he left in his ski in 1919. He joined the. He went to England. He came back and he joined the. The Free State the, the fight for independence. Uh, and he. In the Black and Tan Wars. And he was injured actually. He only died in the 1950s. I have been in contact with some of his family. Uh, again, we're related through the Keynes. Uh, I often heard my mother talking about or declared himself. And he wrote this great song. If, when a Gunnamara man sings a song from some other part of Ireland, it has to be good. And the Gunnamara man took to Oral and Bahuin and they often sing it themselves. They would claim to be one of their own only for in skis in Mayo. <laughs> but I've done my best. I translated it as the wise to the I can change glasses to walk. Could you sing it? I will. Uh, have you viewed that? I like it. I like it. It's long ago I had to go from a lovely English I he left in nineteen nineteen and they travelled overseas. I he always thought and indeed sought a better life to be in exile free from slavery. Away from it, I grew up tough and hardy. I was strong in mind and limb, and I spent my young life fishing. It was either sink or swim. And of time from my twelfth year, my face awash with spray. Oh, sailing west with sailor spells on my way to in the sea. There is yellow gold. To be holes in England to a crew with hot sweat to lose for those who choose this payment to secure. There are a hundred million taken, whether hard or soft you be but uh, things were never done like that on the lovely in the sea i settled down in dublin town when i returned back home the war of independence was raging all around. And since I was reared with danger and faced it every day, I joined the fight for Ireland's right and uh, the Isle of English With gun in hand I joined the band of Irish volunteers and I fought the low sea black and tans I am not a Shame to say, with heart's delight to stand.
stand and fight a precious thing to see a freedom fighting fisherman that came from industry the herring and the mackerel still abound at Tromaron and the lobsters are still waiting for me to make my own the pollards flock around black rock and the codet cabragi but I will never sail again from the lovely English This time, you want them put Lehent father, Kachala Hela, is some crack, is Mujigil Bela. Lehent father, Korong a hodge, Upper Lajeno, Gakdina a forge. Lehent father, Ekfara Mach, and Vekin Shavid, and will shoot the chart. Lehent father, a fanak der ske, O me yea, Ekfago Gabe. Lehent father, O Nil Shafia. Fario to Genor, Emigugia. Lent father is much scatter wild. German Dien much from Tillon is Nabot. Grammy the Michael. 